Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. So I just watched Small Axe Lovers Rock. Let's talk about it. So Lovers Rock is the second instalment into Steve McQueen's anthology series that is comprised of five films that all centre around the lives of the Caribbean community between the time of 1960 and 1980. Now like I said in my review of Mangrove which was the first instalment of this series I absolutely love the fact that a director like Steve McQueen someone of such high calibre is tackling this topic because I think you know stories like this are just so few and far between that to see that that being brought to the forefront by this director is just incredible and it's incredibly encouraging in terms of thinking about the types of voices that may be highlighted in both TV and cinema in the future. I hope and pray <laughs> that this continues on this trend that I've often talked about here on my channel of the diversification of black representation because we're getting so many different kinds of stories being told by black storytellers and filmmakers about black characters and I think that is absolutely amazing because that diversity means that people get to see different facets of black life. And here again we have yet another example of this, this time around the entire episode, as it is technically an episode as well as a feature film in its own right, is centred around this one night where this main character, this female lead, goes to a party. She sneaks out of her house <laughs> and heads off to a party which I believe was referred to as a blues party back in those days, but essentially it's this community gathering of these young Caribbean people living in London gathered around in this tiny <laughs> London flat or London house and they're all grouped together having a great time in this makeshift nightclub. Now as I was reading up on this whole episode and the culture around it and what it explores I did see that there was this idea that because of the difficulty of black people entering you know white majority nightclubs this kind of came to fruition these kind of parties came to fruition and there was also this idea of people in this community wanting to gather around and celebrate and have a fun time in this safe space where they could meet with their friends, they could eat their food, they could listen to their music and just have a great time where all the worries of the world <laughs> kind of just slipped away and they allowed themselves to just let their hair down for that one night. And I think that is just so fascinating. I think that's amazing to see. It's something that we often still see but in that environment it just has a completely different context in terms of the heightened amounts of racism and and um, alienation that they suffered in that society, in this society back then. Again, it's such a fascinating topic and it's something that we don't really get to explore much in film and television. And once again, I'm glad that Steve McQueen brought this to the limelight. And I will say that when it comes to the best parts of this episode, the way that it emerges you into that environment, you feel the suffocation of that room, you feel the sweatiness, you feel the crampedness, but at the same time, the music is booming. At the same time, everyone is vibing everyone's having such a fun time and the energy feels infectious and I think the episode does such a great job of communicating that and that's what I particularly enjoyed about this episode however I will say that in general I did find this episode to be slightly less enjoyable and slightly less I don't know entertaining or invigorating as the previous episode and we'll get into the reasons why later on but first and foremost I also wanted to mention the lovers part of lovers rock that being the central focus of these two lead characters, these two lead black characters who meet at this party and end up I guess falling in love or at least falling in lust or something. They end up starting this little fling, they have this little spark amongst them and it's this kind of love story of these two people who meet at this party. All sorts of events ensue there but in the end they end up together and it seems as though it's the start of something new for them both and I found that really nice and refreshing to see. Once again, <laughs> We scarcely see a love story of any type centered around two black characters that is rare that is few and far between to say the least okay it is scarcely seen because oftentimes there'll either be one black character if that with a white person or with a racially ambiguous person we've seen that time and time again don't think I haven't noticed Hollywood anyway <laughs> here we have nothing of the sort because these two leads are unequivocally black <laughs> it was just so nice and so incredibly meaningful and profound 
around to see these two black characters come together at this party and basically fall in love at first sight and have this connection with one another and it was just so unapologetically romantic and sensual it was really refreshing to see and I appreciate the fact that Steve McQueen didn't shy away from that whatsoever he wanted to present these two as romantic leads the type of which we don't see very often and I think he did a very good job of doing so. And as for the leads themselves I found them to be both very charming and very charismatic I enjoyed both of their performances there are also some other side characters in this episode who I found to be very charismatic as well I mean everyone first of all looked absolutely stunning absolutely stunning <laughs> their skin was glowing <laughs> everyone had glowing skin everyone had amazing clothing everyone had amazing jewelry like we were all turned up everyone was just turning up to this party looking immaculate the style the taste okay the glamour <laughs> there was plenty of it to go around even with the men as well like I, I love the way that everyone dressed and we also get an insight into you know these two girls getting ready for the party at the beginning of the episode which I also very much enjoyed seeing that little insight <laughs> of these two girls just getting ready like I'll do your hair and let me borrow your makeup it was just it felt so authentic it felt real and even though this episode is taking place in an entirely different time it still feels so relatable to this day like I said before these blues parties didn't just act as a form of entertainment or a way to pass the time they were also a safe haven for the people of the black community during this time living in the UK and in particular in London being able to find that safe haven to find safety and security in this space or someone's house where you're welcome where you only need to pay a small fee and you can enjoy the food of your culture you can enjoy the music of your culture and see your friends and family members that was just something that was so sacred to this community and I think that very much shows through this episode I think Steve McQueen communicates that very very well and he does so not just through the scenes where we're in the party itself but also in the few scenes are actually outside of it because in the few times when these characters do step outside into the real world almost they end up being affronted by racism by sexual assault even and rape there are themes of that also being explored here although briefly but they're always being affronted with the horrors of the real world with the reality of living in this society and living in the real world it kind of kind of shakes them out of the reverie that is the party so when they come back in there they can enjoy themselves they get lost in the music they get lost in one another and it's a whole new environment that has been set up for them in that house and that kind of juxtaposition just emphasizes the importance of that community center that is created with these blues parties so whilst there was quite a bit that I enjoyed about this episode like I said before I did find it to be slightly less engaging than mangrove and the reason why <laughs> is because uh, okay so there was this twitter thread recently all about films that don't strictly have a plot but are more to do with the vibe like the film is just filled with vibes <laughs> just general vibes there's not really a structure in the way that we would usually see with the three act structure some films just have a a vibe <laughs> okay what well, one film that very much came to mind was uh, call me by your name like films like that where they're just vibing <laughs> <laughs> they're just vibing <laughs> um here's the thing i don't love films like that okay <laughs> i'm not the biggest fan of films that just vibe okay i need to have some structure i need to have some story i need something to keep me engaged okay this is very much the case with lovers rock it's a bit of a it's a vibe there's a lot of vibes going around not a lot of structure not a lot of plot really things happen in the film but it's not really about that it's more about the vibe <laughs> of the blues party which is absolutely fine and i appreciate that on some level but when you have like extended scenes where people are literally just dancing to one song there's no cut like it's just dancing to this repetitive song with these repetitive reggae beats and listen no shade no shade to the genre whatsoever but when you have several songs like this and several scenes like this it did get a little bit dull to me i'm sorry it did get a little bit dull but i can imagine 100 percent that if you can relate to this culture and if you can relate to the music and even the time period like i saw people on twitter were saying how they were crying in this episode because it reminded them of the good old days if you can relate to that i don't want to take anything away from you absolutely i do not want to take anything away from you because i know for a fact if this was like congolese music playing i would feel nostalgic as hell so i have there's no shade 
whatsoever but it did mean that as I was watching the scenes I was like okay when are we gonna get to the next <laughs> scene <laughs> like it wasn't the most dynamic film for me now that's not to say that I need every single episode of small acts to be about rampant racism and police brutality and you know things of that nature not in the slightest I enjoy the fact that this is essentially just a love story about two people who meet each other at this party and end up having a wild night together like I absolutely love that but I needed it to be a bit more structured I needed it to be I needed something to happen I needed things <laughs> to happen more things to happen in the story to keep my attention at a hundred throughout and I feel like there were definitely moments where I kind of dipped in and out of it <laughs> because I'm not the kind of person who can just watch a film that vibes <laughs> only vibes <laughs> I will say though I did very much enjoy the fact that Steve McQueen ended this episode with like an alternate Cinderella story reality where the couple end up going back into the real world you know outside of this house party and the realities of their lives outside of that house party emerge pretty quickly they're kind of shaken out of this dreamscape that that house party created and I very much enjoy that scene where you see uh, the main lead character who's been talking slick to the girl all night like he has been laying it on thick like he's been trying to court her all night but he's kind of faced with the reality of his everyday life and without giving too much away you see a different facet of his personality in that scene that kind of shakes you out of it that kind of shakes you out of that illusion that he has created for himself and I especially like the fact that she doesn't react in the way that I predicted she would <laughs> like she seems down with it she seems to understand that there are different facets of your personality that you have to present to the world depending on the environment that you're in and so when the guy suddenly switches up on her when he's a completely different person that's like entirely unrecognizable she gets it because he has those different sides to him depending on the people that he's dealing with and then at that party he felt very comfortable to be his true self but that's not the case in the outside world and so his demeanor very much reflects that and so with all of that being said I'm going to be giving Lovers Rock a 6.5 out of 10 so that's it from me now that I told you guys my thoughts on Lovers Rock it's time for you guys to let me know what you thought of this episode down in the comments below please be sure to subscribe to catch new videos coming up thank you guys so so much for watching I really really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one bye